In our last movie, we took a quick tour of the tools palette and learned that really these six separate categories under the tools palette can be contained in three categories, make stuff, change stuff, or link stuff. Now we're going to take a look at a very close relative to those or something that we need to have in place to use these tools and that is the layer palette. In this movie we're going to take a look at how the layer palette works, why you choose the different layers and the implications of some of those. Because as we get into actually designing and creating our animations or our characters for animations, we'll be using all these layers and these layers have very different properties from one another. When you open your document, by default, you're presented with a vector layer. The vector layer icon is this little funny thing that looks like a, in the lower right hand corner over here, it looks like a lima bean or a jelly bean or something, and it's got little eyes where you can hide the layer if you want to and you start winding up with multiple layers. Well, what exactly is a vector layer? A vector layer is where you draw vector shapes, and a vector shape is any of the shapes you draw with the make tool. It's mathematical. It's simply made up of formulas that tell the computer program what vectors or directions the lines go and what they're filled with. So if I click on this circle, for example, the oval, I can quickly draw an oval vector shape. This goes on a vector layer and you cannot draw those on any other kind of layer. Well, what other kind of layers do we have? You find those by clicking on the little icon in the layers palette down here where it says new layer. We've got a new layer icon. We have a duplicate layer icon. And then we've got obviously a little trash can symbol to delete those. And then we've got these curious little dot, dot, dots. That is Anime Studio's way of saying, hey, there's more information here. This is how you get more information about whatever it is you have selected. So in this case, we have one layer. If I click the information box, then we'll get information on that. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. Right now, let's look at some of these other layers. Currently, we have a vector layer. I'm going to hide that. You can still see the shape. If I come back up and choose my selection tool or press the keyboard shortcut G, which I'll do now, we change that tool. I will click off. We can still see the object, but we can't actually see it rendered. So this is a great way to unclutter your scene a little bit. I'll come down to the new icon or the new layer icon in the layers palette. Select that and we're presented with a bunch of options right here. Right now we've got vector layer. I could create another one of that and draw some more shapes. I'll do that so you can see what goes on with that. I'll go ahead and select a square. Draw a square. Well that's just fine. I'm going to change the interior color of that by using my shape select tool over here. It highlights with a checkerboard pattern. I'm going to just change it to some obnoxious color like uh, bright green. I'll press the space bar to validate that color selection and my shape changes. I'll press the keyboard shortcut G, which is just like moving over here to the upper left hand corner for the selection tool. Now I'm going to select this object and we can see it's obnoxiously green. I'm going to come down and activate my layers palette. And you'll notice some of it's hidden right now because I was using the styles palette, which happens to overlay that in this very small screen space, 1024 pixels by 768 pixels. That's just not quite enough room to get everything to fit in. Well, I've got two layers now. I'm going to reveal layer one by clicking on it. And now we can see it show up behind the green layer layer to the green layer and I can go ahead and name this layer if I want. How would I do that? Either by clicking the three dots here or double clicking on the layer. I'll double click now. And now we can just change the name here. Let me move this over here so you can see it. It's a little off the screen there. And I'll say green square. Although it's not quite square and hit return to validate that. We'll look at some of those other options that are there. Uh, later on in this series. Layer 1, I'll have brown circle. And that's fine. And now I have the luxury of being able to take these layers and drag them one on top of another and change their order. So that's a great way to work with that. Well now let's take a look at another layer capability we've got. I'll come up to the new layer icon. Click on that and we've got a group 
layer. I'll select that and we see a little folder that shows up but there's nothing in it at all. However I can take either one or both of these layers I'll click on it now and drag it into that group layer and you'll see it highlight completely red and release and then I'll take the green square layer click on it and drag it over the layer folder icon for layer 3 and release and now when the disclosure triangle is collect right there it closes up and those layers go away so it's a way to control and manage your layer involvement a little bit We've got additional layers to choose from here that we'll explore as we continue to work with different projects. Layers like image layers, which are pictures, bone layers, which are created to connect stuff, switch layers, which are used to create very interesting interactions over time for lip syncing or any type of motion like that, particle layers, 3D layers, and note layers. They all behave the same way over here, meaning you can drag them around, change their location, get more information very robust. But the reason I bring this up now is that I'll click the disclosure triangle and reveal everything that's in layer 3. I'll go ahead and select the green square layer by clicking directly on it. I can come back over here to my tools layer or tools palette in the left hand side and now I can use some of my layer tools right here for example like this rotate layer X. I'll select that tool I can click right in here and now we're rotating that one object by itself, the layer itself, not the object. So now you're starting to see how we can get some very sophisticated interactions between our tools and our layers. In our next movie, we'll take a look real briefly at the camera palette.